you have two and a half minutes. Today it's like good enough because of the black background. Sure. Sit here, I'll check it out. Yeah. As you say, you're an expert. Sixteen people have already come. Mm. Very good morning. I was just thinking when I fixed up this topic that uh, most of the young boys and girls, they grow up with one dream. Of course, everybody also has uh, goals and ambitions. I want to become very rich, I want to be a CEO, I want to be this, I want to be a military officer, all that is there. But along with that, there's another dream that in my life, when I grow up, I am going to have romance, I'm going to have marriage, I'm going to have a life partner and life is going to be wonderful. Don't all the fairy tales tell us? The prince and princess married and lived happily ever after. It's drilled into us right from the time when we are small babies. So we go ahead. One fine day, we either find somebody whom we fall in love with and get married to that person. Or our parents select and say, this is the right partner for you. And as obedient children, we oblige our parents by falling in love with that uh, person. Either way, we begin a new phase of our uh, life. That phase is where 
I am no longer alone. Every decision, every small thing, even on a day-to-day -day thing, what time I get up, whether I have tea or coffee in the morning, when do I use the bathroom, starting with small things like that, everything now is connected to my partner. So my partner is an individual who belongs, in most cases, to the opposite gender, has had a completely different upbringing, has a completely different attitude, value system, family dynamics, and all that for 20, 30 years, whatever age you decide to get married. And these two are now supposed to be very compatible, and they are supposed to be forming a team. By the time we are settling down to understand our partner and to understand what life is as a married person, as a couple, that I am no longer alone, I have to do a lot of things. There are a lot of advantages of having a partner. There are also a few restraints here and there, a few things that I have to adapt, adjust. By the time I am going through that process of adapting and adjusting, I get my next promotion. And that is, I become a parent. Now, when I become a parent, if my bonding with my partner has been very good, it gets cemented because we now have a child. We say our family is complete. Now we are not just a couple, we are a family, even if it is one uh, child. So we say, okay, now everything is focused on the child. That's what I tell people that, you know, after you have gone through your, uh, what do you call it? the falling in love and falling out of love, uh, that phase, you move on to the uh, phase where you are trying to build in that re relationship, the developmental phase of your uh, uh, marriage. By the time you are doing that, you move into what we call as the child centric stage of your life or of your marriage. The focus is on the child, whether you like it or not, both fathers and mothers. Their focus comes on the child. Even if the father happens to be a very busy professional, working outside, going out, spending a lot of time at work, still somewhere at the back of the mind, the focus, the attention, and the priority is the child. So we have, of course, mothers are much, much, in most cases, mothers are much more involved in uh, you know, the upbringing and their focus on the uh, uh, child. Very often, if I ask a gentleman, uh, you know, uh, who are you? He says, I am Deputy General Manager of Quality Control. If I ask a lady, who are you? She says, I am a mother of two children. So what does it mean? It means that we are even willing to submerge our own individuality, our own identity to focus on the child or on the uh, children. The lady who says, when asked, who are you? I'm a mother of two children, is forgetting that she is also a creative person. She is also qualified in this particular field. She is also an expert in these this, this, uh, activities. She also has a name for herself in something else. She has done something for society. All that gets negated. And she focuses on the fact that I am uh, the mother of two children. Now, what happens is the same way as it happens in marriage, that if you go into marriage with very high expectations, sort of idealistic expectations, my partner should be Mr. Right or Miss Right. My partner should be ideal. My partner should contribute towards making my life into an ecstasy and into a heaven. When we go in with that type of expectations, Obviously, somewhere along the line, we do get pulled down a little bit. We find that, no, I'm not getting that ideal thing that I was looking for. I don't realize that it is because I had set unrealistic expectations. If I am giving an examination and if I say that I will be happy only if I get 100 out of 100, then even if I get 99% marks, I'm going to be a disappointed person. But if I had gone into that examination saying that I want to get as high marks as possible, I want to make sure that I score much better 
than what I had done earlier, competing with yourself, as you say. In the last examination, I had got 82%. So this time, I should get something higher than 82. That is how, if I look at it, even if I get 83%, I'm a happy person. Because I say, yes, I have moved forward. I have done better than last time, right? But unfortunately, in marriage, as I said, we go looking for that Mr. Right, Miss Right, thinking that the moment I get married, I'm going to live happily ever after. And then that does not happen, as I told you, the focus goes on the child. Now, the other thing that has happened uh, within this last one or two generations is that the number of children in a family has come down. So if like it used to happen in your grandparents' days, if a couple were to have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight um, children, the focus and the attention gets diluted over so many children. But here now what is happening? A huge chunk of couples are deciding to have only one child. Some of them are deciding to have two children. It is rare to come across a couple who says that we want a third or a fourth uh, uh, child. So, with the numbers being so limited, obviously the focus gets more and more. If I have, let's say, only one child, I want everything for that child. I want the best for that child. I want to ensure that that child really achieves something very great. Somewhere along the line, again, we are going back to that concept of I should get 100 out of 100 marks. Because this is my one and only child. I want to make sure that my child does the best. We have already you know, uh, schools which offer IIT coaching from 5th standard and 6th standard. They have not only decided that this 6th standard child should become an engineer, they've also decided that this child should somehow struggle, struggle, struggle all his formative years where he should be enjoying playing, doing all sorts of extracurricular and uh, you know, leisure activities instead of all that. He'll be just mugging up, mugging up, mugging up till finally he gets into some IIT or some IIM or something like that. That is what we are training up uh, uh, children for. I don't know, you must have heard. The latest news is that this academic year, some private universities have started offering a six-year engineering degree after 10th standard. I'm sure there are so many parents who are thrilled with the idea. My child has to finish his 10th with good marks, marks which are good enough for him to get into a good PU college or 11th and 12th standard. Again, the child not only has to do well in his academics, he has to spend two years of rigorous coaching. CET, Comed K, JEE Mains, JEE Advanced, NEAT. All those things the child has to go and the parent keeps on shelling out money to the coaching institutes. And at the end of it, the suspense. I have given the CET exam, I have given the JEE exam. What is the rank? However well I have done, if my rank falls a little below what it should have been, I don't get admission. And the person is considered to be a failure, which is very sad. Because not getting selected to the number one institution in your priority list is not failure. You have number two, number three, number four. Many of them are as good as number one. Some of them are better than number one. We don't even realize that. We go only by the reputation. So what are we doing? We are going on focusing on ensuring that you know children should. That's why so many parents will be saying, 10th standard, I'll pay that huge fees that they are demanding. Put my child straight into a six-year engineering uh, uh, course. At 10th standard, do you...
रुकावट के लिए खेद है एंड होपफुली आई एम बैक एंड होपफुली यू कैन नाउ हियर मी यस अनिस कैन यू हियर मी लॉग इन एंड चेक एंड टेल मी बिकॉज आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू कीप टॉकिंग एंड देन बी टोल दैट नो नो वी कुंट हियर यू सो आई एम जस्ट वेरी फाइन Yes, 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 yes. Okay, I got half a dozen yeses, so you can hear me. Okay. So what is happening is that we are playing with the lives of these children, and if the child unfortunately happens to be doing well in academics and doing very well in uh, studies and getting good marks, then the punishment is that the parents' hopes go up, and he has to go higher and higher. It's not enough to be an engineer. You should be an engineer from the top-notch institute, etc. Okay. now today my focus is not on these children my focus is on children with special needs that is the politically correct uh, label to give to a child we used to say that you know this child is mentally retarded this child is good for nothing this child is like this and like that today thankfully over the years a lot of work has been done and we are in a position now to identify and separate out what are the individual special needs of certain children and the good news is that a lot of children with special needs can actually perform they can actually become contributing members of society they can lead what we call as a normal life professionally and personally and family uh, life so what how does this process go let me explain to you when a child is born along with the obg there is a pediatrician the pediatrician immediately checks the uh, child the pediatrician wants to see whether everything is normal in the child starting with the apgar test birth cry was normal they normally write in reports no that when the baby was born the birth cry was normal meaning to say that okay response is the baby has now cut the umbilical cord come into this world and is bawling his head off so you know that yes this child is normal then they physically check the child hands legs fingers toes mouth ear eyes everything and they say yes in case there is a physical limitation or a deformity it is visible there and then you can make out a child born with let's say club toes or or some fingers missing or anything of that sort if you find that a child has some physical limitations the parents obviously are very shocked parents are very disappointed the parents go through a lot of grief why is it that my child has not been born normal but believe me it is far easier to accept physical deformity rather than mental deformity or mental limitations i would put it Um, that way so if the child has certain so many children are born for example with a cleft lip the lip is cut today we have simple procedures the lip can be set right and nobody will ever even know that this child was born with a cleft uh, 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 lip there are children born with club toes you know their feet are sort of like this uh, uh, club together they can be uh, set right so so many of these physical limitations can be uh, set right a child born with a hearing uh, uh, disability the child cannot hear within no time uh, one year two years three years the child can have what is called as a cochlear implant he doesn't need uh, hearing aids there's an implant into his ear by which he automatically starts hearing and that lasts him almost like a lifetime so he can lead almost a 90% uh, normal life despite the fact that his hearing is not present at all so like that all these things are taken care of the more difficult uh, part is when a child is born with what we call as developmental disabilities his development is not as per the norms or as per the average that has been set let's take the first one which is the iq of the child iq is inherited mostly by the genes so as the child is growing up you get an idea about the iq of the uh, child 
you would start understanding that this child is very bright. He picks up very fast. This child is average. You have to teach him. And when you explain to him nicely, he picks it up and he follows through. This child is not being able to pick up. With this child, you have to explain five times. And that too very slowly and give him time to recoup and understand. Then and then only he starts picking up. So you have these intellectual levels. The first category was probably a child whose IQ was 120, 130, 140. Second category is probably a child whose IQ is between 90 to 110. That is what we consider as the average range. The third category is of a child whose IQ was 80, 70, 60, whatever it is. Now, these children who were earlier called mentally retarded, but the correct name now that people give is intellectually challenged. Like you have a physically challenged child, you have a visually challenged child, you have an intellectually challenged child. Now, this child, the brain formation is slower than what it, uh, we expect of an average uh, child. This child is not sick. This child is not disabled. This child does not need medication. This child does not need a miracle cure by going to some temples or churches or gurus or babas. All that this child needs is a level playing field. His comprehension, his grasp is uh, uh, slower. And because of uh, that, if you can teach him at his own pace, he can continue to learn. But very often what happens, parents are in denial. How can it be? I have done my engineering and I am a software engineer. My partner is this, this, this in accounts or in teaching or in this field and that field. How can we have a child who uh, you are saying is intellectually challenged? No, no, I think the school people are not teaching well. Let me take out my child and put him in another school. Same thing happens. At the end of the year, they say, no, your child is not being up. These stupid people, the, the school, they don't know. They are not paying in enough uh, attention. So I take him into another school. I know of so many cases where people have changed five schools, six schools by the time the child is supposed to come to that level of 10 standard, whereas he has not come anywhere close to the level of 10 standard. And on top of that, whatever little motivation that he had, he has lost that motivation because he is being shuttled from one place to another. So all you need to do is that if you find that the child has intellectual challenges, his comprehension capability is not good enough, you put him in an environment, you put him in a learning institution where number one, they go slower and number two, they have different methodology of teaching so that the grasp of the child remains good enough. That is how we need to take care of that. Eventually, the child will not be a topper. The child will not get gold medals. The child may not go to IIT, IIM, Harvard, Stanford or whatever. doesn't matter. The child can still do very well for himself or herself. And if you identify with such children, the right thing, the right path, where most of these children, you know that today we don't talk about basic IQ only. We talk about multiple intelligences. So while this child may have limitations in terms of his basic IQ, he may have severe limitations in being able to do, let's say, mathematical sums. But he may be a very creative person. He may be able to do something totally uh, different when it comes to creativity or spatial skills or interpersonal skills or intuitive or emotional. So many other areas where he may be able to do much better. So what happens is that if you can identify and work with that uh, child at that pace, the child goes on. The other area of uh, you know, uh, children with special uh, uh, needs, Hema Malni says we have limited schools of such kind. Yes, Hema, but I also want to tell you that Bangalore is one city where we have a plethora of such schools. 
if you are willing to explore put in that little effort to find the right school which you are, is absolutely suitable for your uh, child your child will blossom out but it takes a lot of time effort to find out which is the most appropriate uh, uh, school for your child and also what backup has to be given to the uh, child that's what we forget sometimes they put the child in the school and say yeah i found the right school they have a resource room they have these they have that so i am no the child also needs a lot of backup the child needs some additional uh, inputs the same thing happens to what we uh, is referred to as uh, children with learning disability ld i don't like the word learning disability i call ld as learning difficulties but i don't think of a child who has learning difficulties is actually a disabled child he has difficulty if a child has difficulty walking you don't say that he is orthopedically handicapped or disabled he can still walk but he walks with difficulty maybe you have to give him a stick or a cane to uh, uh, hold on to maybe you have to help him the first few steps by holding his hand and then he starts uh, walking so they have difficulty in walking same way a child may have difficulty in learning again i repeat many cities including bangalore uh, uh, specifically which offer very good solutions to children who have ld ld comes in different forms also many of you may be aware of it dyslexia is the most common uh, uh, one children who have difficulty in reading and uh, writing they mix up you know uh, alphabets like b and d 6 and 9 they have difficulty in understanding difference between right and uh, left small small things nothing very great and in today's era of technology all these can be overcome very easily more seriously are those children who suffer from other developmental disabilities such as cerebral palsy we call them spastic children autistic children children who have autism spectrum disorder children who have down syndrome these are the type of uh, you know children who need much more attention and it first starts with acceptance farida rightly says we need special parents more than special schools it starts with the parent if you are a parent or if you know a parent who has probably a child with special needs creating awareness is that very crucial first step the moment a parent is willing to accept that yes my child has special needs i'm not saying right off the child i'm not saying that the child is handicapped and you know put him into some uh, uh, rehabilitation or something no the child just has special needs that's it let's say some family member in your family develops diabetes his blood sugar levels are high what do you do you don't say is a patient put him on bed or send him to hospital you just change the lifestyle you start making differences in the cooking you make sure that you know that person doesn't have sweets or something even in his food um, habits how uh, to go about uh, uh, it all these things uh, uh, you take care of you tell the person do a lot of walking and exercise make sure that you reduce your weight and that's it the person can lead an almost normal life despite being a diabetic right the same thing happens with children like this today with the way technology has advanced children with autism spectrum disorders children with down syndrome children with who are spastic that is uh, children studying i mean uh, having a, a cerebral palsy all these children including some children who have multiple disabilities all these children given a level playing field can lead i would not say perfectly normal life because again it will be like uh, aiming for 100% if they can lead 80 90% normal life which is more than enough everybody need not be a ceo everybody need not be a multimillionaire 
if you are giving an opportunity for the child to grow into a healthy overall balanced mature and responsible child believe me regardless of his educational qualifications regardless of which top notch institutions the child went to or didn't go to the child can not only be a happy child the child can be as i said a contributing member of society he will not be a parasite he will not have to depend on charity he can earn for himself he can take care of his family he can do so many things if you give an opportunity for such children and one prime thing to remember in this is the earlier you start the better are the chances that the child will get that level playing field that i'm talking about that is what happens farida just now said denial is the biggest challenge yes day in and day out we are coming across parents who refuse to acknowledge and they're losing time you put the blame on the uh, school and you shift him from one school to another and another one year is gone and in a small child's life one year is a long period if a child is 4 years old and you delay giving him a level playing field by one year you are actually depriving him of 25% of his life that is the significance of small children so what i will do is now one is of course as usual i will wait for your uh, questions in the chat box so far i've just got some nice you know very insightful comments but i've not had any questions can you please put in some questions or doubts or whatever you want to and i also have one or two points which i would like to emphasize uh, upon but i will do it as they say in the tv serials chote se break ke baad jaiye nahi picture abhi baki hai and my tea is still there i want to complete my tea and then be back with you after a minute yes when you listen to such sensitive talk every time i listen rather i have been listening ali on this topic past quite a few years there is some kind of jitter that happens in my body that you know i wish i can do something for this families i don't say only children because it's the whole family who needs this special uh, kind of uh, love or attention or guidance i would say and when uh, what more ca- counseling can do then you know if you can help these parents to come across counselors who are you know going to help them understand their emotion and be empathetic and you know empower them to deal the situation what they are going through that can be a wonderful gift to them i would say and um, we have a beautiful program called diploma in counseling skills which equips you to deal with emotions of people and empower them because it's completely non directive you are not taking the charge of person's life but you are helping the person to identify how they can take forward with their skills with whatever they have in them which they have not explored till now that's the uh, main key of diploma in counseling skills and if you want to know more about it please call up our office number or meet seema in person she will be very happy to call you and speak to you and show what all other facilities are there at banjara and uh, do come to banjara have a feel of it and the process of admission has already started the process of learning has already started there are quite a few students who have come and done their initial process and they are looking forward for more to come in in next few months and i think ali has just finished his cup of tea and he can get back to you thank you so much thank you very much now what is it that we need to do anupam has come out with a very uh, you know constructive suggestion that just putting the child in the care of a special educator and saying okay now i have provided this for my child so now everything should be fine it doesn't work that way the 
environment in which the child uh, 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 grows up is very very important parents play a very very important aspect anupama rajmani has said that how can we identify subtle learning difficulties in an online setup my god every time this question of online comes i myself become a special adult instead of a special child because i am technologically challenged i used to think that i have a fairly good iq and i have a fairly good eq and all that but the moment technology started come bombarding us and everybody is talking about this as the new normal i find com myself completely isolated i do not know how you can find out about child special needs in the online uh, setup all i can say is let us work towards getting back to the old normal as fast as possible okay schools cannot reopen right now because of government regulations etc fine we will wait we will follow the orders given by the um, authorities but the lockdown has been lifted it is not difficult for you to take that one child individually to a child psychologist a special educator and say can you please interact with my child assess my child and tell me whether this child has any special needs that's all that it needs we start off with identifying whether the child is responding when you talk to him or not whether the child's speech is clear or not whether the child is making mistakes like i told you in learning difficulties the child starts mixing up b and d instead of uh, god he writes dog those sort of thing very simple uh, things so you start off with uh, that equally important is what navina has said that parents manage their expectations and show empathy to the children very important a lot of children you have seen that uh, movie tare zameen par what is ishan's problem ishan's problem of learning difficulty is a very minor problem because if he is directed away from the mainstream education and uh, the left brain activities he can do so many things in the creative world he can perhaps earn more than a software engineer but if you saw the movie you will recollect that the problem was the way he was looked down upon not only by the teachers but also to some extent by people like his father who refused to acknowledge that there is anything wrong with the ishan they keep on saying he is lazy he doesn't do well and on top of that he tells lies so it becomes a discipline issue whereas the poor child is struggling with the issue of his learning difficulties how to deal with ld children in the class is a question that requires a lot of time and effort i am willing to help any teacher group of teachers sonal of course is an expert in this he is doing this on a daily basis but one thing i'd like to tell you is do not generalize do not say this is how we deal with ld children in the class if you have four children who are learning difficulties in the class all four are unique all four are different and the teacher has to have that sensitivity the patience and the time to ensure that the uh, you know uh, needs of that individual child are met pratima rightly says some people overdo read too much and ask everyone is my child normal what will the other people say yes yes he looks normal uh, to me and that is how you are reinforcing to yourself and saying no no there's nothing wrong with my uh, uh, child these are the type of uh, um, things is ld genetic or due to environmental uh, um, situations both the factors do contribute but i will not go into that that is a research topic by itself a lot of work is still going on my concern is about a child who is already 1 year 2 years 5 years 8 years old and he is having difficulties in his learning before he grows up and become starts getting um, education and drops out there's so much that we can do whether it came genetically whether it came environmentally is not very important to me there are so many things i can comment on that but i don't want to take the time of the people today by going into the theory part of uh, 
Yet Helen Keller is our role model and inspiration. Absolutely, no. Helen Keller was an amazing person, but also, as I said, you know, let us not set very high goals like Helen Keller, or not. Despite being both, uh, uh, you know, blind and deaf, how did this child manage to achieve so much? And let's see whatever are the needs of the uh, child. Okay, Pratima says at times children lose out a lot when we put him in a special school. You see, today we have special schools, we have so-called normal schools, and we have integrated schools. We have mainstream schools which have a resource room where the child goes for a limited time and gets those extra inputs so that he can catch up with the rest of the uh, class. So what you need to do is to identify where this particular child fits in best. After answering these questions, I will ask uh, Sonal to give you quickly uh, the methodology that we follow in Banjara Academy is Gurukul. That whenever a parent comes and says that my child is not performing or my child is even misbehaving, how we look at the child holistically without putting rubber stands and labels on the uh, child, how we try to, number one, assess and number two, guide that family to the best possible. I agree if the child has got a very minor uh, you know, special needs and if he is put in a total uh, you know, uh, special school where there are severely disabled uh, children, and, you know, he may have difficulties. He may not get exposure the way he should get. So I'm not recommending that every child with the smallest of uh, special needs should be dumped into a special school. Special schools play a very important role for those children who cannot fit into the mainstream uh, schools at all, who will be, you know, booed out from there and who will just not be able to perform. So special schools are doing amazing work for such children. But not every child with special needs has to be put in a special school. As I said, there are integrated schools, there are normal schools with good uh, resource rooms. There are small, normal, mainstream schools which give that one-to-one -one sensitive you know, attention to a child. I'm just uh, dealing with a, a child who has already come up to degree level. And when the parents spoke to me how they found one small school near their house and they put him there. And those people said, we will take care of the needs of this child. You explain to us, you get us inputs from the assessment that is done by the uh, special educator and give us those guidelines and we will follow it. They followed it so beautifully that not only the child performed well in his 10th and 12th uh, uh, standards, he also grew up with a sense of good self-esteem, a feeling of self-worth that I am capable of doing something. Today, when somebody talks to him, he talks so positively about what he wants to do in life, what he wants to achieve, how he wants to make his parents proud of him. That should be our uh, uh, aim. <laughs> Farida says that parents have told me to give a nice whack to a child. Usually one family member is blamed to be responsible for spoiling the child with too much love, etc. All these things have been researched and surveyed and conclusions are very clear. For example, capital punishment is out. If you as an adult say, my father or my teacher used to beat me up and that is what made me study and that is what I am today. It is like saying, my grandfather used to go to school in a bullock cart, so I will send my child also in a bullock cart. Days have changed. Circumstances have changed. Needs of the world and the education system have changed. You have to bring up today's child, taking into account today's uh, uh, you know, requirement. Sri Rajeshwari says some children are good in maths, but unable to speak properly like to stay alone and does not respond in school, but they will be normal in house. Yes, this is a special need. The child is good in math. The child has a mathematical, logical mind. The child can calculate. Now you have identified that these are the strengths of the child. What are the weaknesses? Child likes to stay alone. They are normal in the house, but they don't want to respond in school. That is a special need. 
all you have to do is to fulfill that special need. That's all you have to do. Provide the child with, see, like I told you, if there's a physical limitation, if a person is not able to walk properly, you get him a walking stick. And with the support of the walking stick, he walks like anybody else, maybe a little slower, but 80, 90 percent of what he is capable of, he will walk, isn't it? These are some very simple, very significant things. The only difference being that physical limitations we understand very clearly. Mental and emotional limitations, since they are not so visible as a person who is blind or a person who is deaf or a person who has got a limb missing which is very visible here, these things are not visible to us. And that is why we have these, uh, uh, you know, difficulties. Sometimes parents are really worried when their children are a little slow in communication, learning or other skills, and they keep wondering if everything is fine. It's difficult to make them understand that each child is different. Yes, mm -hmm. and if they have this uh, thing, instead of sitting and wondering and worrying, why not get an assessment done? Nothing wrong with it. And assessments today, the way we do, as I said, you know, I'll ask uh, Sonal to give you a quick overview on how it is done. We tell the parents to tell the child, you know something, there's an auntie called Sonal, auntie will go and meet her, okay? She's a very jolly person. She will make friends with you and she'll tell you how to get better marks, how to have memory retention, how to do better things in life. Or you were saying, no, that... Uh, that uh, Prithvi is uh, bullying you, how to get over that. She will help you in whatever you want. And you can talk to her freely. Mama and Papa won't even know. You know, Sandal Aunty is the type of person who won't even tell Mama and Papa what you spoke to them. Come, 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 let's go. Now, we are not telling the child that I am taking you to a therapist to get an intervention and to get a psychoeducational assessment done. The child thinks that I am sick. I am disabled. I am good for nothing. That should be prevented and it can be uh, uh, prevented, which is what Navina has said that it's very important to make that child feel loved, cared and saying that we need them. All people dealing with this child should make them feel in such a uh, manner. Let me also clarify to Navina and all of you that all people will not do it. Let's be realistic. There will always be one cranky mommy from the neighborhood who will come and look at that child and say, Ayyo, chi, 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 see this child, what is wrong with him? Some, is he some hucha or something like that? All you need to do is to counterbalance that. You can't fight with that elderly mommy. You can't throw her out of the house. But you can counterbalance the child by telling the child, auntie is old, no, sometimes she doesn't understand. That's why she goes on blabbering. Don't worry about it. We know what you are capable of. And the last thing I would tell you before I hand over to uh, Sonal quickly to explain to you the process of how you can do an assessment and find out any uh, special needs of uh, children is that do not keep on focusing on the disability. Focus equally on the abilities of a child. I told you there are children who cannot do 2 plus 2 in mathematics, but they draw and paint so beautifully that their paintings are selling for thousands of rupees. Just one example. I know of another child who is severely autistic, but he plays percussion instruments so well that he is invited to music concerts where he is paid between 500 to 1000 rupees for one performance to accompany the singer on the percussion instruments. There are innumerable examples like that. But as I said, we also have to focus on the abilities of the child and not go on harping on the disabilities which brings down the child's self-esteem. So thank you very much. I would like you to hang around for another few minutes. You will have a good takeaway by Sonal explaining to you the methodology that has to be done to identify the special needs of the child. Keep that in your mind. Whenever you come across a family or a child with this sort of thing, you can use that. And of course, you can always get back to Sonal anytime if you need further clarifications. So thank you and see you next Saturday 
with a really wonderful topic which is useful to everybody and if you deny that that topic is not useful to you there's something wrong with you you have special needs okay see you yeah hello everyone and just give you an overview of how we work at gurukul bachara academy is uh, i can give you a scenario to imagine if you are knocking a door a main door which is you know blocked but it has an that you know that eye view which you can you know peep in and see what is the general tendency we try to you know peep in and see what all is seen right and when you identify something which you are able to see and you are happy about there is a smile right that's the only concept we use that's the major concept we use when a child comes to us we do not look through that closed door of the judgmental or the label which the child has been sent like lazy snoopy unable to do this unable to do that those are the identification which the child has been sent with but our focus is on that that small little eye where we can peep through and see that what is that i can see which is otherwise not seen because of the closed door and our exploration starts from there and we don't only believe in what we see we also make a child do a lot of activities may it be written may it be playing activity a lot of conversation which goes under understanding the child when the child comes whether whatever label the child has come with yeah i will not go into that nitty gritty of the labels because ali has spoken a lot about it yeah what we focus is how is the emotional intelligence of the child because that is what is going to give a better life to the child intellectual challenge is something you cannot tap upon because that's his limitation so it's no point pushing the child which is his weaker point can we tap upon the positive points or what is the strength of the child so start identifying the strengths what the child is carrying and the biggest strength what you can give and identify is the emotional intelligence find out how aware the child is of his strengths and weaknesses how will you do that by again observing the child where he shows interest in what he is doing where he shows that he is trying but unable to do and then you know he suddenly breaks down or cries or shows that irritation that shows that he wants to achieve that particular act but is somehow not able to so that's his special need get to know how you can identify those little special needs the strengths are something which he will do it happily but the weakness will be something which he needs help to i never say weakness is something he cannot i always use that term that weakness is something where the child needs certain help guidance some support some motivation and an empathetic approach the moment we are sympathetic we are not doing any help to the child the moment we say oh my god he is not able to leave it i will do it for you you don't take the trouble i am there no you are unable to complete the notes i'll complete it for you you are doing just what you call satisfying your own self you are not helping the child in any sense the whole empathetic approach will be you say i am sitting next to you you start writing even if you cannot complete the whole page it's okay let's see how much you are able to do and how much you are able to understand how much you are able to process what you have read what you have written or what somebody is speaking about that can be a better learning than working towards achieving marks because when it comes to marks i am very much against it i feel it's just a tool to go into uh, some specific institutions which you are looking forward to but other than that there is nothing that you need to uh, do for marks because if you are able to understand what you are doing in life no academic institution can give you that because life long is your school but the academic learning will stop after a point 
and the biggest lesson to you know develop your emotional intelligence is how you can identify your emotions how you can get aware that i'm angry i'm jealous of someone or i'm upset about some reason or about certain uh, things what my teachers or friends or neighbors are not giving me or not including me those are the special needs of the child and that's where the child needs help to understand his emotions because he doesn't have the vocabulary most of the time because it's not taught in a school in our general academic uh, setup but that's where our uh, contribution as significant adult plays a major role help the child to identify the emotion label it speak out the moment you can also practice this the moment you understand your emotion that i am feeling very irritated and you speak out to someone it automatically helps you get aware right and if somebody who is sensitive enough uh, who is listening to you and can help you that you know okay this is what you are feeling what will you do with it instead of taking the charge oh my god she treated you badly wait i am going to fight it out for you again you are taking the charge in your hand might as well tell help the child to understand how will you deal with that specific emotion which you felt when you are going through that and that situation that's the way you are going to help the child to self regulate manage the emotion build one step ahead the emotional intelligence and that becomes the motivation for life ki yes i can do something and i can you know achieve something which is very important explain the importance of emotional intelligence because that is something is that's a learning which is never ending in life academics will come in go out but emotional intelligence will stay with you for lifetime yeah and when you are able to do uh, when you are able to be self aware learn to be empathetic learn to identify emotions that helps you stay motivated and when all these four pillars are good enough with you don't you feel you feel confident enough to meet people and be in the social circle and walk with confidence so inclusiveness will happen this way rather than forcing somebody to include you you start helping the child to include himself in the society that can be a better strength than you know telling people to include your child yeah jyoti says if 2.5 year old child can't talk but can do all activities should he send to a speech therapy of given time to learn own i would say instead of we deciding the layman's let a therapist to decide let the parent go to a uh, special uh, professional who can guide ki what therapy the child needs yes speech therapy does do a very good job but let it be under the supervision of professionals let us not do the google search google read and start medicating ourselves it's the same concept over here so if somebody says oh you're coughing i think you know you just take this cough syrup and you'll be good but you don't know what actually has gone bad go to a professional find out the actual reason and the path to help the child that can be a proper approach to help any child any adult also i would say yeah and we have another few minutes if you have any questions i am here or i will explain ki what are other special needs also apart from the listed um special needs anywhere when you do a google search many at times you will see that you know generally a child is you know very happy doing everything but the moment something something goes wrong and the child stops talking so somewhere that emotional trap has just caught him and he is unable to express himself there also is a special need and that smallest need what you can provide that moment is if the child is like close to you just tap on his shoulder hold his shoulder press a little bit and you see that the child feels i am understood i am not wrong in my feeling that little support can help the child open up to you speak out to you and you can take it forward from there 
Nida says, my son is a six year old and he's very hyperactive. He gets distracted very quickly. So what can I do? A six year old, if you ask me, I would say he is bound to have a lot of energy. Yeah. And uh, distraction is part of his growth. Apart from that, to help yourself to deal with his energy, channelize his energy, give him options to uh, use his energy. Like, would you like to play a ball or would you like to go out and run? Give him options where he can use his energy. And once he uses that, then you can bring him to whatever you wish to do. Again, make sure you look into his eyes and then give him the instruction of whatever you want to do. And one instruction at a time. Do not give a paragraph that, you know, Rahul, come here. I told you, don't go down. I told you, come sit with me. I have so much of work to do. Or uh, go get a pen and a book. We have to start our lessons. And number of instructions. Child will not process anything. He will just stand in front of you and you will be like shouting. I told you to do this, this, this. And you're still looking at my face. Can't you hear me? The child will still look at you because child didn't understand anything. When a child is having a lot of energy, he needs to be, you know, brought to your attention for that hold and shoulder. Tell him, Rahul, look at me. I want to tell you something. When he gets into that frequency of your eye contact, then say what you want to say in one sentence and then ask what did he understand. Once he understood what you want to say, then give your next instruction. That's the way slowly understand. And that's the special need. Okay, That's how you will be able to help him forward. Uh, any insight on working on self-confidence of a child? Yes, Himanshu, whenever you are working on the five pillars of emotional intelligence, that automatically builds confidence. Yeah. And that will never allow you to go overconfident. Confidence is something you have to keep a check on your emotional intelligence. Continuous basis. Never think, yes, I know everything. The same thing you help the child to understand. Okay, Emotional intelligence is something that you can learn lifelong. And it's never enough. Yeah. What options to use in online disruptions by children who can get rude or naughty online? You know what best you can do instead of pinpointing the child on the screen where there are so many other listeners and observers and sometimes recording is happening on the session. Avoid speaking to the child or pick on the child that moment. At the most, you can say, I can see you want a lot of attention from me. But can we speak after the session one on one? Give that one on one attention. Try to call up and speak to him on a video call, preferably, or on an audio call. Video call so that he can also see you. He can see your concern through your eyes and your uh, uh, through your audio. He will understand your tone of concern. And first, try to listen to him. If you listen to him, he will feel a lot of understanding has happened. And he'll be able to express what has happened. And this is the last question of Levi Take. We have already crossed the time, but yet. What to do if 11 year old uh, does not write and give all kind of explanations and excuses? Liva, I think you can connect to me because I will have to explain you a lot of things before I even give any kind of suggestions on this. Yeah. And it's time for us to, you know, log out. But I will be more than happy if you can connect to me one on one. I will be more than happy to answer all of the remaining questions also. Yeah. Thank you so much. And you can call our office number, ask for Sonal to get connected, and I'm there for you. All the best. Reach out to as many as parents and families you can. If not, at least be there for them silently without judging. That will be the best thing you can give them. Thank you and bye-bye. See you next week, next Saturday.